Recording in progress. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Sir, sir.
ಹಾಂ ಹಾಂ ಸರ್ ಸುರೇಶ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ವೈಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅನದರ್ ಒನ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ if i think you can start hello rajiv i think you please start yes sir yes sir say uh, am, am i audible sir yes you are audible yes sir good evening esteemed faculties of this group and my uh, friends today the topic of the uh, seminar that i am going to present is volume guarantee ventilation in units uh, it has been uh, guided by our respected vision uh, sir and somnath sir uh the main topics that i'll be covering in this uh, talk will be the background of volume guarantee ventilation why target volume is targeting volume is important various barriers to this uh, volume guarantee ventilation volume uh, control ventilation versus volume target ventilation different working principles of volume guarantee ventilation the common trouble shooting that we get in our day to day practice the various pinnacle guidelines guiding the use of volume guarantee ventilation and finally the take home messages okay coming to the background uh it was alexander graham bell in 19 uh, 1889 uh, when the first negative pressure ventilation was used then benson et al and donald et al in 1958 ventilation of newborns with pulmonary insufficiency insufficiency was used in 1965 maria deli voria first high, used highly successful Uh, made use of mechanical ventilation in babies with hyaline membrane disease and in 1967 gregory et al first successfully used cpap in hyaline membrane disease however it was uh, probably after the death of us president john f kennedy child who died due to hyaline membrane disease and there was no proper or sufficient infrastructure available at that time And the baby died in August 7, 1963. Probably it was after death. Then major uh, steps were undertaken to upgrade this modality. The first generation of ventilators was uh, UB Bird One. It operated on the IMB principle. Since 2005, various newer generation of ventilators have come up, which are microprocessor based. 
They have used patient triggering, volume tri- targeting, and pressure support modes. Mm-hmm. Your ventilators monitor pulmonary functions at the bedside with ventilator graphics. Pressure control time cycle continuous flow ventilation has been the standard of care for more than 30 years. The acceptance of volume targeted ventilation is unexpectedly slow despite growing evidence. The acceptance of volume targeted ventilation is high in Scandinavian countries, Australia and New Zealand. However, their use is much less in the rest of the world, even including uh, the most developed nation that is USA. And the debate is still on uh, regarding the optimum settings that we need for volume guarantee ventilation. The best mode, whether conventional is better than high frequency ventilation and the various approaches to winning. There is still no uh, consensus regarding them. So the first uh, question is why to target volume rather than pressure? This can be seen uh, in this uh, particular diagram, uh, various uh, factors play an important role in uh, the final uh, for BPD. However, as can be seen here, uh, mechanical ventilation plays a very important role in postnatal lung growth and development, and therefore, improper use of mechanical ventilation can be a very important reason for development and BPD. As can be seen from this uh, figure, where volume volume targeting has been compared with uh, pressure targeting, it has been seen that uh, when high pressure and low volume is used, that is, uh, volume targeting is used, It can be seen that the extravascular lung water content, then the bloodless dry lung weight, and the distribution space of uh, 125 level albumin, all are low in case where low volume is used. But wherever high volume has been used, it can be seen that all these parameters are deranged. Another uh, uh, trial by Hernandez et al. published in 1989 uh, comparing volutroma versus barotrauma. They have found that uh, the lung injury score is less when uh, restricted sexual movement has been used or no volume has been used. So inadvertent hyperventilation with pressure limited ventilation results in hypocarbia. And Louis et al. demonstrated that 30% of ventilator infants had at least one blood gas with PSO2 less than 25 during the first day of life when pressure targeting was used. In a Cochrane meta analysis uh, done by Kligenberg et al. 2017, a very landmark uh, trial, here they have compared uh, pressure targeting versus volume targeting. And they have found that all the major parameters, that is, date for BPD at 36 weeks, BPD at 36 weeks, grade 3 to 4 IVH, PVL, pneumothorax, hypocapnia, days of mechanical ventilation. In all these parameters, apart from the first parameter, all other parameters are less when volume targeting has been used rather than pressure targeting. So in spite of all these evidences, which are mainly in English, what are the barriers to the successful use of volume targeted ventilation? In the survey of ventilation practices in the use uh, of the United States and Canada, they have found that the different barriers to acceptance of this volume targeting has been inertia or fear of the unknown among the physicians. The rationalization that is the need more evidence before volume guarantee is used on an universal basis, lack of suitable devices for targeting the volume, and lack of understanding of rationale, functionality, appropriate settings, and limitations. So 
the fear among the physicians for pipophobia that is increasing uh, that is using more peep or barophobia that is uh, fear of increasing pressure has been the main reasons why still many physicians are afraid of using volume targeting rather than pressure targeting so uh, the basic differences between volume control versus pressure control uh, as can be seen or as we all know that in volume control the volume uh, largely remains the same and according to the compliance of the lungs uh, the pressure is altered however in pressure control the pressure remains delivered remains same and according to the compliance and the resistance of the lung the volume differs so these two terms are not synonymous that is volume control ventilation and volume target ventilation what are the differences in volume control ventilation the major limitation is that what is controlled is the volume injected into the ventilator circuit and not the volume that enters the patient's lung this limitation is based on the fact that the volume is measured at the ventilator end of the circuit and not at the patient's end as can be seen from this figure there are various uh, parameters or various factors play a role in uh, the amount of volume that goes into the lung of the baby as can be seen from this figure the compliance of the tubings then the et leak and then the exhalation tubing so different factors play a role in the amount of volume that goes into the lung of the baby so if we measure the volume on the ventilator end it will not be a correct reading however if that volume is measured uh, in the patient end that is uh, in this part of the circuit that is the et tube so uh, uh, almost a correct uh, estimate can be made so therefore volume control ventilation uh, where Uh, in volume control ventilation, mainly the volume is measured at the ventilator end of the circuit, and therefore that is a drop. So in volume targeted ventilation, it's uh, it is limited to pressure controlled modes of ventilation with automatic adjustment of inflation pressure to target a user said VT. Some devices regulate uh, VT delivery based on flow measurement during inflation and others during exhalation. The use of exhaled VT appears to offer the best balance of safety and effectiveness. Various modalities of uh, volume targeted ventilation were developed specifically to address the limitations of volume control ventilation when applied to LBW infants. The volume guarantee on the baby log 8000 plus that is commonly available in all the units and VN 500 ventilators is the most thoroughly studied of the volume targeted modalities. now coming to the volume guarantee that is the interest uh, today variance of volume uh, what is vg it is a variant of volume targeted ventilation which focuses on expired tidal volume and measured at the patient end it is volume targeted it is time or flow cycle it is pressure control form of ventilation different working principles of vg the operator or the physician chooses a target vt and the pressure limit the microprocessor compares the exhaled vt of the previous inflation and adjusts the working pressure up or down to target the set vt set by the physician the, the pip is been from one cycle to the next is limited to avoid overshoot and undesirable oscillations if tidal volume exceeds 130% of the target vt then inflation is terminated at that point which is a safety measure in vc as can be seen in the figure the physician lets a pressure limit that according to the tidal volume that is delivered the machine or the algorithm adjust the pip up to that particular limit and tries to uh, uh, means uh, correct the vg volume as said by the physician 
and once this one third is uh, the delivered volume is more than one thirty percent, then the inflation is terminated so that excessive pressure is not uh, provided and um, injury is limited. The algorithm limits the pressure increment up to a maximum increase of three centimeter water. With large changes in compliance or patient inspiratory effort, several inflations are needed to reach the target BT. The algorithm is geared towards slower adjustment for low VT and faster response to excessive potentially dangerous VT. What it essentially means is that uh, if we set a VT of suppose four, and then if uh, the machine or the um, uh, deliver suppose a tidal volume around 10, then the PIP, the machine will adjust the PIP slowly, not very drastically. And it will require almost three to four breaths. It will slowly adjust the PIP and the required PIP for the tidal volume will be achieved in an almost around three to four breaths so that the desired target volume that is VT equal to four is achieved. <laughs> so basically the clinician selects the tidal volume, the PIP, the uh, PWP, TI and the flow, baby log 8000, the ventilator that we commonly use, delivers the next blade. If the VT is according to the set VT by the physician, then the machine leaves PIP the same. However, if it is not same, then the machine adjusts the PIP to make the title volume according to the set volume. The DZ modality on the Dragger baby log 8000 plus and VN 5500 ventilators employs separate controls for triggered and untriggered inflations. The microprocessor will use the working pressure for the previous cycle of the same time, that is, whether it is triggered or untriggered, as a starting point for the adjustment. Consequently, the transpulmonary pressure remains stable, resulting in more stable tidal volume delivery. What it essentially means is that if a patient is uh, triggering and whether a patient is not triggering, if a patient is triggering, then um, according to that particular volume, the microprocessor or the flow sensor will sense it and it uses separate, separate, I mean, separate algorithm for triggered and untriggered inflations. For triggered inflations, then uh, the following triggered inflations should be adjusted. For untriggered inflations, the following untriggered inflations will be adjusted. So as can be seen from this figure, when the VZ is on, then the volume is largely around the set VT, but if the VZ is off, there is large, large fluctuations which can uh, cause volatrauma. So, since the term is volume guarantee, it does not mean that every time only a set volume is uh, given to the baby. So, it can be a misnomer. In an awake, actively breeding infant, the VT fluctuates around the target VT. This physiological variability of VT is actually desirable and avoids atelectasis. So, if every time only a set VT is, is uh, given to the baby, it may cause atelectasis. So a slight variability is desirable. Now coming to a very important uh, feature that is available in modern ventilators like the VN500 and the VN600 is a leak compensation. The baby log 8000 uses the uncorrected axial VT resulting in inadvertent hypocarmia when the ETT leak exists about 40%. However, in ventilators like VN500, it employs an effective leak compensation algorithm. And even if the leak is up to 70 to 80%, it can properly deliver the said uh, means volume. And this ability to compensate effectively for leaks up to 80% makes it makes this modality feasible in virtually all infants. And so this is a very welcome feature and it can uh, it has caused 
a lot of change in how these newborn babies are ventilated in these ventilators. So as can be seen, if the ET leak is corrected as is done in ventilators like VN500, then the volume is almost same. However, if it is not corrected, then it can cause a large amount of fluctuations. In uh, um, VN500 and VN600, where this leak compensation is activated, it can be seen here that uh, the pulmonary graphics remain largely stable. And uh, here VT is a calculation. However, if the leak compensation is off, it is a measured axial volume, which may not be correct all the time. So what are the different variants of volume guarantee that is available? Mm -hmm. In Macad mm -hmm. ventilator, it is known by the term of pressure in known by the name pressure regulated volume control or PRVC mode. Here VT measurement is done at the ventilator end. So that is a drawback. And it uses the VT of the previous cycle, like, like that one. But the main drawback is that the VT measurement is done at the ventilator end. And however, this issue has been corrected in the new Servo N and Servo U series, which should make BRVC behave much more like VZ in Babylog 8000 plus. Then in Hamilton G5, it is um, known as volume targeted adaptive pressure control mode. It functionally similar to volume guarantee, adjusts inflation pressure in response to any deviation of measured VT from the target plane. In SLE 4000 and SLE 5000 ventilators, it is known by the term of targeted tidal volume. It functions like VZ and it uses Excel VD measurement and actively modulating impression pressure to target the desired VT. And leak compensation feature is also available in some of the newer SLE ventilators where TTV plus mode is available. So, as can be um, seen here, the volume guarantee is an option available on the Dragger Babylog 8000 plus, the VN500 and the Leone plus. In Dragger, it is known by volume guarantee and in SLE, it is known as targeted title volume plus. And um, recently, a version of VZ has also been implemented on the Avia ventilator and the Z Engstrom care station. Now coming to some common troubleshooting or issues that we face in our day-to-day -day life. This is a common alarm that we often find in our NICUs where we use VZ, where it shows VT low, this alarm keeps on coming and keeps on irritating. So the main thing is to uh, keep calm at that time and ease our previous knowledge. This low VT alarm, can be caused due to decreased compliance of the lung, due to increased resistance. If the PIP limit is too close to the working PIP, if the alarm delay is too short, if large ET leak is there, that is more than 40%. If flow sensor malfunction is there, this is also very important. And if there is interrupted exhibition. Among all these features, the first thing to note and the first thing to see is that the flow sensor is working or not. Unnecessary alarms can be avoided by optimizing the settings and the alarm limits. Use of longer alarm delay settings that is more than 10 seconds. Appropriate pressure limit settings. Avoidance of large leak around the tube. And adequate physical comfort measures or sedation will also minimize the irritating alarms. A low tidal volume alarm occurs if the expired uh, VT is less than 90% of the set VT for the duration of the set alarm delay. So coming to various troubleshooting, one is ventilator is not generating any PIP, that is this flat, then we should first check the tubings, whether there is any tubing disconnection is there or not. Most of the time, the tubing disconnection is in the, on the humidifier side of the circuit. Even if the VT is set too low,
even if the VT is set too low, then also the ventilator may not generate any PIP. Then if there is low PIP, which is not increasing despite lower absent um, tidal volume delivered to the baby, first we should see whether there is complete ETT or circuit obstruction, uh, where the PIP drops to half of the previous value. This is a safety feature because it avoids a large overshoot of PIP once this obstruction is released. Persistently low PSO2, we should um, see whether there is metabolic acidosis is there or not, whether that low PSO2 is due to compensation. We should also see whether the baby is agitated or not. Another thing is that if the baby is sticky pneak and, and the, uh, there is increased work of breeding in the baby, then we should see it, whether the say, uh, VT that we have said is too low for the baby for the present pathological condition and whether the baby is agitated or not. A very common issue that we find in our day-to-day -day practice is that the baby is having significant tachypnea and retractions coupled with relatively low working PIP and measured VT, which we find in the um, settings, that is often exceeds the VT that we see. What we see on the graphics is that the PIP graph or the pressure graph becomes flat. So, uh, in this scenario, probably the baby requires more VT that, than that we have said. So in that condition, it, it is due to inadequate support. And so first thing that we should do, that is to increase the tidal volume that we have said, uh, say from four to five ml per kg. But however, if the same, we get the same picture in the graphics, but the baby is completely comfortable, then probably that indicates that the baby is ready for exodus. So this uh, particular graphic can be seen in these two conditions and we should interpret this graphic according to the clinical condition of the baby. So the baby gives us a lot of information bedside. It is not only the ventilator or the graphics that we should see, we should also closely monitor the baby. If the baby stops breathing after 10 minutes uh, or after a few times, it can be due to overventilation. And one important thing is that it is mainly the pH which drives the respiratory effort and not the PCO2. However, we should aim to keep the PCO2 above 35. The baby becomes tachypneic with retractions, as I have already mentioned. It may be due to inadequate support. If the baby's oxygen requirement is rising, we should uh, increase the MAP. If the baby is fighting the ventilator, it may be due to air hunger, inadequate support, obstructed ETT, or malposition. So different clinical guidelines for volume targeted ventilation has been used and they have been mainly based upon two or three reviews or studies done. One has been the practical guide to neonatal volume guarantee ventilation by Kligan by et al. Uh, published in Journal of Perinatology in 2011. And the more recent and the most uh, popular one that is published in 2018 by Martin Kessler, where uh, he has given a review and the popular terminology that he has used is one size does not fit all. And that has been the evidence-based recommendations or the latest recommendations for successful use of BZ in neonatal population. So regarding the initiation of volume guarantee ventilation, we should implement volume targeted ventilation as soon as feasible. It is not that we have to wait for it. We can start it right away. Basic modes of synchronized ventilation, PCAC or uh, pressure control, pressure support ventilation is preferred while using this mode. Backup rate, about 10 breaths below spontaneous breathing rate, that is 30 per minute for turn, 40 per minute for preterm infants should be set. We should select PEEP appropriate to the infant's diagnosis, current condition, and the FIO2 requirement. We should set the PIP limit three to five centimeter above the expected working PIP need. And we should ensure that the flow sensor is calibrated and functioning properly. This is very important. If the flow sensor is not working, it means that the VZ is not working and we are not 
uh, doing the correct thing. So coming to the appropriate tidal volume settings, we should remember that setting a particular tidal volume is not suitable for all the infants. Just like one uh, size does not fit all, as uh, popularly narrated by Martin Kessler. So we should uh, set the VT according to the condition of the group. So it has been um, seen in the study by Montazemi et al. published in 2009 that uh, uh, the tidal volume increases as we uh, come down the um, bar rate. So for a higher bar rate, there is around 900 kg, probably 4.5 ml per kg may be good enough. But if we come down, that is around 500 or 600 gram or baby, which we may need tidal volume around 5 to 6 ml per kg. And the relationship of postnatal age with VT is also there. So if, um, as we go, um, uh, as the baby grows older, the tidal volume requirement is higher. So different target tidal volume ventilation and different target uh, volume has been studied in many um, trials. As can be seen here, according to the bar weight, the tidal volume requirement may increase. As you go up, the tidal volume requirement is increased. Uh, however, for most of the babies, uh, the experts recommend from 4 to 7 ml per kg of target volume that we should set. So, it is not that we should uh, set the even higher tidal volume set is also injurious and the lower tidal volume set is also injurious. As can be seen from this study, that lung inflation in preterm infants with RDS, effects of ventilation with different tidal volumes, they have um, shown that uh, they have compared um, 3 ml per kg with 5 ml per kg and they have shown that the 3 ml per kg group showed higher levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines in tracheal aspirate and required a longer duration of ventilation. The IL-8 uh, levels, IL-6 levels, PNF, alpha levels all were high when 3 ml per kg was used uh, instead of 5 ml per kg. Uh, this is this is the chart taken from Martin Kessler's review, where they have also shown that depending upon the condition of the neonate or the uh, bar weight or the pathological condition, the initial VT that we should set differs. It is uh, mainly hovering around four to seven, but it depends on the condition of the baby. So uh, we should all uh, keep these things in mind. As can be seen, one particular example I'd like to elaborate is that suppose a preterm with evolving BPD, three weeks old, for that baby, four ml per kg is not enough. Um, that baby may require something around 5.5 to 6.5 ml per kg. After setting the uh, initial VT, that is not the end, then the subsequent adjustments have to be made. Once the range of working PIP is known, we should set the PIP limit 25 to 30% above the upper end of the range. Record range of working PIP as well as PIP limit, limit on all the morning and the evening rounds so that we know the condition. We should increase VT if necessary to achieve the adequate support. And we should always verify appropriateness of support, not only with the ventilator graphics, but also by clinical assessment of the baby. And we should base VT assessments on pH, not pcpsco 2 However, it is better not to uh, go below 35. And we should also remember to adjust for weight gain as the baby grows. Coming to the weaning in VZ, weaning is real time. It is self weaning. We do not lower target uh, VT to wean in VZ ventilation. We should set VT at lower end of normal, that is not less than 3.5 to 4 ml per kg, as has been seen from that experiment where they have used 3 ml per kg and they have shown increased inflammatory markers. We should withhold or reduce sedation analgesia. We should consider raising PEEP to maintain adequate descending pressure as PIP comes down. 
we should avoid <laughs> using SIMD and do not win backup rate on SIPPV or special support ventilation. No need to win backup rate. We should observe the graphic display to detect excessive periodic breathing or rest. Coming to the extubation, we consider extubation if inflation pressure is less than 12 to 15 centimeter water with satisfactory blood gas with a map less than 8 to 10 centimeter. Caffeine should be used in infants less than 32 weeks and distending pressure with CPAP, NIV or heated hypronasal cannula should always be used for at least 24 hours post extubation. We should not extubate to room air. So coming to some practical tips, the choice of mode, the BZ is more effective when used with assist control or SIPPV as uh, in the uh, level of 8000 plus or pressure support ventilation than with SIMD mode because in SIPPV mode, all inflations are subjected to volume targeted as compared to SIMD mode where all inflations are not volume targeted. But no trial has directly compared assist control with PSB mode. So till now, we do not know whether assist, SIPPV or PSB is better because no trial has directly compared. But a common uh, thing that we are doing is we are using largely SIPPV. The BB log 8000 plus permits the use of BZ on with triggered modes of ventilation. That is SIMB assist control or SIPPV mode or pressure support ventilation. However, the newer VN500 and the VN600 ventilators also offers the VZ with non-triggered uh, CMV mode of ventilation. So that is an important differentiator. We should keep the PIP limit close to working pressure to avoid risk of volutroma. If flow sensor is disconnected, stops working or blocked by surfactant, this is important because if we do not set it close to working pressure, then uh, it may cause unnecessary harm to the baby. To avoid this risk, the newer VN500 defaults to the most recent working pressure when the flow sensor is inoperative. So this new, uh, newer VN500 also has this feature that if the flow sensor suddenly stops working, then the inadvertent high tip that is delivered by other ventilator is not done here because the um, uh, it defaults to the most recent working pressure. So how accurate is the control of expired tidal volume with volume guarantee? Kessler and Abukar in their trial in 2004 has shown that when using VZ ventilation, more than 60% of breaths were within the target as said by the physician. One thing to know is that in very patients with congenital diaphoretic hernia, the target volume that we should set is around 4 ml per kg, not higher or lower. So treating the trigger sensitivity, it should be set at its greatest sensitivity. With Babylog 8000 plus, this is a scale from 1 to 10. 1 is the most sensitive setting. <laughs> And setting, setting the inflation time in uh, SIPPV mode, 0 0.3 seconds for babies with RDS. Infants with other lung pathologies may need a longer TI. The appropriateness of the TI can be evaluated by observing the ventilatory graphics as well. As can be seen from these graphics, there is a gap between the um, inspiration and the expiration. We should make sure that this gap is not large and we should adjust the TI according to that. And we should also see that the inflation has ended before the expiration has started. So by looking at the graphics, you can adjust the TI. We should ensure that the inspiratory flow is completed as I have uh, already mentioned. Recommended flow is around six to eight ml per minute, which is sufficient for PIP up to 30 centimeter water. <coughs> And we should also ensure that we provide the adequate PEEP so there is no ethyl electrotrauma in many patients like with uh, RDS. We should set it either more than or equal to 5. 
So the effect of the flow sensor disk space is also important to consider, particularly in ELPW baby. As can be seen that the volume of the disk space in the flow sensor is around 0.9 ml. This may, 0.9 ml may not be more uh, in larger babies, but in ELBW babies or small babies, even this small amount may be um, important and therefore it is important that we take a note of this and uh, increase the set BT accordingly. So the thing is that uh, we can uh, employ volume guarantee part probably in particularly all babies, but in a few journals, it has been particularly uh, noted and has been highlighted that there are a few tricky situations where probably switching of the VZ may be more beneficial for the baby rather than keeping the VZ on. Two of those conditions, one first of those condition is if there is an excessive leak around the ET tube that is more than 50% in ventilators like Babylog 8000 plus, but uh, with use of ventilators like VN500, where leak compensation is there, probably uh, in that ventilator we can use even if the leak is up to 80%. Second condition is if there is severe metabolic acidosis where the pH is around 6.9 or 7, where the baby is trying to compensate and is hyperventilating. So in that condition, whatever VT we may say, or even if you see it something around eight or 10, it may not be enough for the baby. For in those few situations, it may be better to switch off the VZ. Otherwise, you know, practically in all situations, it is better to keep the VZ on. So the take home message uh, that I'd like to give, uh, as the popular saying from Martin Kessler, it reduces the risk of inadvertent hyperventilation, lung injury. It also results in more stable minute ventilation so that fewer blood gas determinations are needed. It is a self-winning mode and has been shown to reduce the total duration of mechanical ventilation. We should not fear barophobia, but we should rather fear volutroma. We should remember that one size does not fit all, so setting only a fixed tidal volume is not enough. We have to modify it according to the baby's condition. And we should remember that it is not the improper use of the ventilator. However, it, it is the improper use of the ventilator by the physician that leads to lung injury. So it is not uh, ventilator in this lung injury, rather it is physician in this lung injury. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv. Comprehensive, Chris. It is open for discussion. Hello. Yes, sir. Any question, ma'am? I think one of the few of the important points that he has highlighted. One of the most important thing in clinical practice is that the flow sensor. In many a times, you will find that the flow sensor is not working. If your flow sensor does not work, that it busy or that patient trigger ventilation is meaningless. It becomes intermittent mandatory ventilation. So whenever you use volume guarantee ventilation or patient triggered ventilation, you should be very, very careful that your flow sensor is working. If the flow sensor does not work, it is all meaningless. It becomes IMB only. Second important thing what he has highlighted is that sometimes you will find many times it happens, baby is struggling, there is increased work of breathing, but if you see the PIP, PIP, it touches the PEEP level. Yes. So if it touches the PEEP level, any expense with the CAP TD2 on a vision node. So someone yes. is asking about the volume. So before we start the question, just let me, about the volume guarantee while using HO. Nowadays, now newer ventilator with high frequency ventilation, although it is not the scope of this discussion, they are using high volume guarantee. At least 
with the volume of dead space like 1 ml per kg body weight and what that what it does that amplitude is automatically adjusted so when you guarantee the volume in high frequency ventilation amplitude you don't have to touch. here here you are setting the maximum pip there you have to save the maximum amplitude so amplitude will keep on changing according to the need for the tidal volume as because in high frequency ventilation also the volume plays an important role so the fluctuation of volume volume will be less some of the newer modes of ventilation like like sle 6000 they actually use this volume guarantee along with the uh, high, in high frequency ventilation second important question i think someone has asked any experience with car pd2 and vg no the, we don't have any experience and actually the, as because we are not using calf endotracheal tube in our newborn patients that is the reason leak is likely to happen because sometimes we may not be very sure that whatever ET tube we have placed that may be snugly fitted. It should not be too tight or it should be too loose also. If it is too tight, then it will cause pressure trauma. And if it is too loose, then it will leak. But I think the VN series ventilator, this has become a game changer. If 80% of the leak is compensated by this VN series of type of ventilator, that times you just intubate the baby and put a tube, appropriate size tube and whatever is the leak, that will be compensated. Another important thing is that, suppose, I think all of you who are watching this uh, um, meeting, when you intubate a baby, sometimes you find that leak changes in different positions. Suppose you keep the view on the left lateral, there will be 30% leak. And if you keep change the baby to the right lateral, there will be no leak. That means there will be a fluctuation of volume in those scenario. But if there is a facility for leak compensation that can be tackled and baby will be comfortable during ventilation. And this commonly happens in, in different positions of the baby, the uh, leak changes. So in that case, in other ventilator, it is very difficult to control that leak because you cannot keep a baby on certain position and th that is not wise. So that is another advantage. Let's see what are the other. Uh, and Another important thing is that just remember what he was telling. Suppose you have set a maximum PIP and baby requires more than that. So, th so what is seen in the graphic, that is the pressure delivered by the ventilator. But there is a pressure generated by the baby. That is a negative pressure. And this is positive pressure delivered by the ventilator. And these both the two pressures, we call it transpulmonary pressure. Suppose baby, is able to generate the tidal volume, what we have said, then the algorithm of the ventilator is such that it will not deliver the pressure more than the P PWP. So definitely then the PIP will come down. And sometimes we get deceived by this PIP, the PIPs when it touches the PWP. We think that baby has improved, but baby is having increased workload breathing. So he has rightly pointed out, suppose PIP touches the baseline or the PEEP level, and baby is having increased work of breathing or baby is struggling, that means the baby wants more tidal volume. So we have to increase the tidal volume. I think in some literature, it has been said that tidal volume may be increased 0.5 ml per kg. You increase the tidal volume and see whether it is baby, uh, baby's work of breathing is less or not. And second scenario is that if the baby is comfortable and the, it is touching the PWP level, that means this baby does not require ventilation. We have to extubate the baby. Any yes. other question? And I think who are here? Okay. Sir, uh, Nevaksa is volume control and volume target ventilation same. Sir, uh, uh, volume control and volume target ventilation, do you tell? Yes, sir. Tell sir uh, as, I, as I have found out in the literature is that what volume control means is the volume delivered by the ventilator. And but that is measured at the ventilator end of the circuit. So it uh, the various factors like the uh, circuit compliance, then the ET leak of the inspiratory limb, expiratory limb, all that can play a role in the final VT that is measured in the ventilator end. But in volume target ventilation, it is mainly measured at the patient end of the circuit. So the chance of uh, error is less in case of volume target ventilation. This terminology I have found that much more. 
another difference is that in volume control ventilation the cycling is made by the volume yes. and in volume targeted ventilation either cycling is made by time or flow okay. any other another important thing i think he has rightly pointed out about the alarm and most of the time we find that after connecting the baby with volume guarantee ventilation you will find a alarm of low vt low uh, uh, tidal volume when there is low tidal volume first you have to see you see the appropriateness of your settings second you see whether there is leak or not in the previous ventilator if the leak is more than 40% then also you will find low tidal volume alarm third is that you see whether the there is any kink in the ed tube or kink in the circuit so the volume may be lost fourth you see whether there is any obstruction and also sometimes baby is trying to ventil uh, breathe against the ventilator so all these things should be kept in mind when there is a low tidal volume alarm another important thing is that what is there in the vn series type of ventilator is that in case of volume current ventilation in baby log 8000 or other ventilator what happen suppose 6 ml of tidal volume is delivered 2 ml has been lost during the time of inspiration that means 4 ml has gone to the alveoli during expiration also some amount of volume will be lost like in during expiration 1 ml volume is lost that means actually what is measured that is the 3 ml but in reality actually it is not 3 ml what has been delivered to the alveoli it was 4 ml but as because during the time of expiratory phase also there was loss of 1 ml actually the tidal volume what is measured at the uh, flow uh, proximal end that is the 3 ml so that is not correct in vn series of ventilator they will give you the expiratory tidal volume inspiratory tidal volume another tidal volume that another tidal volume that volume has been delivered what is delivered in the uh, alveoli so that is another advantage so whatever actually shown in the tidal volume in the uh, expiratory tidal volume that is not exactly the tidal volume what is delivered to the alveoli sir uh, volume volume guarantee and volume targeted are both same sir it is same almost same it is same and uh, actually uh, volume targeted initially it was tried in the uh, acylit ventilator now they have what is there is almost approximately same as the volume guarantee vtv the term, the terminal yes, little bit change in the acyl they still is volume targeted ventilation in uh, macy ventilator they say PRBC. regulated volume control prbc in uh, baby log and the series they say it is uh, volume guarantee but volume control ventilation is different yes. okay so volume targeted and volume guarantee are almost same just depending upon almost the same, various volume same, same. Uh, okay sir, okay i just like sir uh, this uh, volume guarantee and volume target that he is asking sir what i have found is that uh, in one uh, review that they have said that volume guarantee is a type of volume targeted ventilation where they use the exhaled vt so particularly they have highlighted that the term exhaled vt because even inhaled vt also probably measured in some um, ventilator some ventilator some ventilator but as because exhaled tidal volume it is assumed that it is the tidal volume which has reach to the alveoli but that is also not correct some amount of volume will be lost during yes. the time of expiratory phase also yes. thank you sir thanks a lot yeah i think all of our using it and another important thing is that most of the time what should be the initial uh, initiation of ventilation initiation of ventilation will be, it is better to start with the sipbb what is uh, ridiculously lower as mentioned one of the slide rl bar um say so that one actually in that particular trial they have used this term but uh, i am also not sure what uh, exactly what to bark where they are meaning by ridiculously low bar they have just 300 400 grammar i think they are mentioning uh, probably they, they are low to very low but very low yeah. another another thing they have mentioned as the baby is growing just like when the baby is growing we change the 
antibiotic dose as, and fluid rate. Similarly, if the baby is growing, then also we have to increase the total volume. Yes. So, I think another important point that we could, you know that when the baby is ventilated for a prolonged period of time, every time there is an increase in the size of the glottis, uh, like that is called acquired tracheomegaly. This happens when the baby is ventilated for a long time and it is really giving us trouble. When the baby is ventilated for a prolonged period of time and you change the attitude, and once you change that attitude, the size of the glottis keeps on increasing. So that is a great disadvantage when you are ventilating for a prolonged period of time. But if there is a facility for leak compensation, that is the great help for us, for those babies. Otherwise, ventilating a baby more than seven days old, or more than seven days, is really difficult. And just another thing about the, the actually what was there in baby log 8000, that was the leak adaptation actually. So if the, there is a 40% of the leak there, they will just maintain the PIP. But actually, it, in true sense, it was not leak compensation. Leak compensation facility has been available in this BN series. What was there in the baby log 8000, that is not actually leak compensation, that is leak adaptation. By adapting the leak, that it, it increases the termination and that increases the PIP level so that the PIP does not drop. And about the amount of tidal, uh, the tidal volume, what is kept in the preterm infant? It is said that the, because of the, the dead space, the tidal volume actually increases because some of the tidal volume will be consumed by the dead space. And for a preterm baby, there is not a separate tidal, uh, uh, separate my flow sensor. So that is the reason we keep at least one ml extra, like four ml or six ml per kg body weight to set the tidal volume in an extremely low birth weight or preterm infant. Any other question? I think if there is no question, can we wind up today? Let's wait for some time. I think we can close the session. I, I think okay. there is no one more question. Thank you, Rajiv. Okay, sir. Thank you. It was a, no, it was a good, comprehensive, and crisp type of presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.